Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Walanda. Honestly, there wasn't one specific moment in time that I sat down and was like, okay, this needs to happen, this needs to happen. Now with these tips, take what you can, leave what you don't need. Let's just customize it to the way that fits you. It just incorporated in my life over time, little by little. I adjusted with life and took what I've learned and applied it. I'm honestly at a position in my life where I really, you know when that, that saying is, um, I love the woman I'm becoming that, I've become the woman I, I've been loving. Yeah, <laughs> does that make sense? <laughs> I've become the woman I've wanted to love. No, I've become the woman I've loved. I've become the woman I've always wanted to love. Anyways, I've become the woman I've always wanted to become. And I really sat down and thought about this, so, so listen up. <laughs> Habit number one is writing everything down. I've known this since I was back in school. I cannot hold all types of information, especially in a short period of time, all at once and the way my brain works is my mind runs faster than my mouth as soon as i think of something my mind is already on to the next one so i'm the type of person i have to have to have paper and pen or my phone for me to write in my notes for me to remember things because when it comes to like a to-do list or aspirations or goals I tend to not forget them, but if I need it in a short period of time, like if it's a short term goal, then I tend to not prioritize that and I prioritize something else that really could have been on a back burner or could have waited a little bit longer. That's why you guys always see when I am doing my videos, I always have my phone right here with me because I'm always looking at my notes. I always have everything written down so I don't forget anything. I'm the type of person that I have to write paragraphs so I can be more specific and very, very detailed because a lot of times, it just depends on what's going on. My mind be everywhere and a lot of times I just need to focus on the task at hand. And it's funny because a lot of people go towards the, like the mood board, not mood board. What do the ones y'all do in the beginning of the year that never really help y'all, but y'all still do it because it's an aesthetic. Um, vision board oh my goodness that's what it is vision board oh i blinked out for a good five minutes so i'm not a vision board type of person i don't have to physically see a picture of my goal in order for me to achieve them i just gotta know i have to do it so bullet pointing them just writing down is all good for me i do not waste my time in vision boards and what another thing i like to do in my notebooks is date the date that i actually write the thing so i don't get a calendar or a dated notebook i just date it in a corner of the notebook make it really easy so when i do go back i see everything I know on this date, I wrote this out and you know, that was like a year ago or that was six months ago or two weeks ago. So I can know, okay, it's been two weeks since I haven't done this. I need to go back and make sure I accomplish this goal or get started on this goal. I write everything down. So that has definitely helped me um, be the more organized, be more intentional with what I do and with my time. Next habit is, research and google everything you guys i think i mentioned this in a couple videos back i do my research on just about anything that either comes out of somebody's mouth or anything that i think of because you cannot just trust anybody's agenda i google everything yes even on google there's false information as well but i'm pretty sure as much as long as you dig 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 you will definitely see the two sides or the multiple sides of a topic of a situation there's just so much information overload going on I honestly rather, when I say Google and research, I honestly rather read actual research type of cases for me to, you know, get my knowledge that way. Yes, you're going to have videos that are very helpful, audio that are very helpful as well. I love listening to books, like especially in the morning when I'm running or while I'm walking, nonfiction type books in order for me to get more knowledge. Like I just finished this one book called uh, P 
period repair manual by Lara Bryden. And it was such an informative book for me to learn more about how my cycle flows, why my cycle flows, the hormones that it you know, that brings to it about every different thing on how your period affects you. you know, there's so much that we don't know and we still will never know as human beings. But just knowing just a little bit helps you maneuver this world just a little bit easier. It just makes living just a little bit less stressful when you are understanding how people react and how people move and how things flow. Like I love sociology and knowing the reasoning behind a lot of people's decisions and stuff like that. So, and it just, it just be the most random things, like everything from plants to, I don't know, just like sand, just literally anything that I think of. And this is why I always got to just write everything down because my mind is just flowing all the time. And yeah, I always do research and just Google things so I can always just sharpen my mind a little bit. You know, what they say, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Okay, so when I was younger, I wasn't this type of person, but I remember once I started getting... This is what happened. It wasn't really about the age or the grade that made me transition into being this next habit, but or doing this next habit, but it was actually the the environment I was in and the life switch I had to do. So, if you guys don't know, my dad was in the military, so growing up I was a military brat starting at 5th grade. I feel like once I left fifth grade and went into a DOD school, Department of Defense school, I had almost, I had no choice but to start talking to randoms. It probably sounded like weird as a young kid, but it definitely helped shape me growing up into adulthood because when I say randoms, I mean like people, just strangers, people I don't know. And if you guys have not moved around, if you've been in the same place all your life and or never travel never done any of that then it's gonna be hard for you to probably you know warp your mind around this but as soon as i got into a dod school everybody in the school is a, a transfer student somehow they've been there for a year they've been there for three years so me going into a dod school i was the new kid and as I got my footing in that school, you know, once you are starting to have friends, once you are accustomed to the people around you, you start getting comfortable. All you want to do, well, me, I can't speak for anybody else, but all I want to be able to provide to another transfer student is comfort. Back then, schooling is different from now. Now you got social media and all, so it really didn't matter. A lot of people that were transitioning in, they're, they're coming into a new place where they don't have any friends, they don't know anyone at all, they don't have family in the area. So they come in as a loner and they want to feel welcome, they want to be comfortable, they want to gain friendships and they want to have people to talk to. I never knew how these kids felt coming into a whole new school in the middle of the school year a lot of the times because that happened to me as well. You know, I what would I want from them in that position, if I was in that position. And that was just for someone to say hi, someone to acknowledge me, someone to talk to me. So I literally just randomly just started talking to people, especially at um, lunch. A lot of people that came in that were new students, they would eat lunch on their own because they would not know anybody. And everybody already had their clique. So it was hard to just jump into another clique. So if I did see a new student sitting alone at lunch, I would just go and say hi. It was just, oh, hi, my name is Wolanda. Just introducing myself and just try to make them feel comfortable because I know it's very daunting for somebody to come into the middle of the year, especially sixth, seventh grade. That's like preteen, right? Teen, teens age. That's a very uncomfortable uh, time to try to build new friendships. Since then, I've honestly been talking to randoms. I, whenever I traveled out, out of the country, mainly out of the country, I wasn't really talking to randoms as an adult in the US, you know just safety wise but uh, mainly outside of the country i would love to hear other people's journey in life where they came from their story because it gave me a broader picture of how big and how different this world is and just seeing somebody's story and looking through their lens is just 
it either humbles you or it just makes you very grateful in your position or it just inspires you to to work towards whatever um, goal because you heard this person's story so it literally opens my mind up really really wide when I talk to randoms but I know when I first came to Dubai I still I still do this every time I get into a taxi unless I feel like the taxi driver is not in a talkative mode or like you know his English ain't that good then I always talk to them. I'm always asking how would their viewpoint about living in Dubai, what they were doing before they were driving taxis, how long they've been in Dubai, um, if they have kids back at home. Like I want to hear everybody's side of the story. I mean, the taxi ride is not that long, so it's not gonna be you know, an hour or some of just talking. So that little bit of 15, 10, 20 minutes I'm in the cab, I really take that opportunity to get to know somebody outside of myself, outside of my circle, and talk to human beings, you know, and not typing or not on social media, talking to virtual people, well, talking to people virtually, but actually connecting with human beings and and hearing their stories and their backgrounds and seeing how their perspective of one view is different from my perspective is never a debate when I am talking or getting to know somebody. It's just always an interest for me. Like, I don't care to fight you. I'm not the type of person who is here to change your mind. I can give two, two cents about changing your mind or about trying to convert you to something. I don't care. Everybody is grown. They were raised with a certain belief and it's not my duty to change somebody's mindset. It's my duty just to tell my story and to hear your story and to take it in. Anyways, I went down the tunnel with that. So let's go on to the next point, which is, okay. I don't understand when people tell me or when I hear people say, they don't have self-control. One, that's so cringy. Two, it confuses me because how in the world you, your own person, your own being, don't have control of yourself, your acts, your thoughts, your, not thoughts, okay? Thoughts is, is you know, thoughts be coming in and out. But no, still, your emotions, your actions, things that you do with, things that you say. I don't understand how people don't have control of that. I feel as though once you gain control, especially females, once you gain control of your emotions, girl, nobody can tell you anything. You have become very, very dangerous. I started to learn to control my emotions very, very, <laughs> very early on in life. Just being in my parents' house, especially a foreign parent, like you can't be acting out. Maybe nowadays, I don't know how these Haitian parents um, are treating, you know, are coddling uh, this younger generation. But uh, back in the day, girl, I had, you better control that emotion. I couldn't talk back to my parents. I could not raise my voice. I could not. Oh, I remember one time I accidentally did this <laughs> to my auntie. She was all up in my face talking, talking, talking. And I did this. I wasn't going to hit her, of course, but like I was getting so angry. She was so much in my face. I went like this. This lady was like, being back when on. Oh, we learned that what back when I got in so much trouble. Yeah, early on, I knew I had to control that. So over time, when I see grown people don't know how to control their emotions, don't know how to control their actions, or can't control themselves, it's very it's sad. It makes me wonder, yo, if you can control your own actions, who is going to? So that's very dangerous when we have a whole bunch of people walking in this world not being able to control what they do. And it could be the little simplest thing as in controlling what goes in your mouth. We as a society has grown so obese and simply not being able to control what we consume, like health-wise. We want to eat everything because everything satisfies our stomach. We don't have controls of how many times we eat, what time we're eating, what, how many times we're drinking, how many times we're smoking. Control of your desires as well. I know it could be hard if you want something right now, right now, but you know, as an adult, you gotta learn the difference between delayed gratification and immediate 
gratification. So I've realized very early on, self-discipline and self-control, it, it, it has to be on the forefront for you to have a better life later on. So when you're 30, you're not still having these um, childish immature mentality of oh I need it now I need it now like that's 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 little kid stuff you know those that's for tan two-year-olds that don't understand no they cannot have this candy right now because um it's it's about to be bedtime but as you grow into adulthood you definitely have to have that self-discipline and self-control this next habit I know it's not going to be for everyone because there are people out here that really really have to have somebody like with them they they depend on other people but honestly for me separation has always always helped me and it definitely did numbers to where i am now in life a lot of times people will hold on to baggage of other people people will hold on to negative nancy's that are around them people will allow other people to consume all their energy and all their research and just leave them on E. I know this goes back to just me moving around a lot and me being separated to my, from my environment and just cultivating me as a person, just looking in and realizing what I like and what I dislike. Separating from everyone every three years as I grew up definitely help me to be able to separate as an adult when needs be so i'm not the type of person just because we've been friends for years if over time you are becoming toxic in my life you are going to get cut off that's just how it is with me there's no reason for me to progress in life with uh weight on my shoulder which is somebody who really doesn't need to be there. If this friendship is not benefiting at all, then I will step away gradually or I will just cut it off. I don't have a problem with just cutting people off. Like, I'm almost 30. I've lived. I just know exactly when something is toxic and I know exactly when something is not beneficial. So I just cut it off. And it's I, I have not absolutely no problem with that not saying if over time a friend ends up changing or being more positive or just having more value in their life and in my life then of course you could always mend something but i don't believe just because the person's been there for so long that means you have to put up with all the negativity that comes with them I, I, I don't believe that at all. And I feel like a lot of people are hindering themselves in their life all because of their close friend or their close relative or even a spouse or a, a relationship that is holding them down. So yeah, I know separating myself a lot. <laughs> Me moving <laughs> to Dubai, that's a big separation on its own. Even if the separation is just for a short period of time, like that's totally fine. It doesn't have to be a separation for the rest of your life. You don't have to be anti-social if you are a social bird. But at the same time, there are some phases in your life. You're going to be like, yo, I just got to step away from my environment because my environment is very toxic or my environment is not helping me grow or my environment is keeping me in the same position year after year after year. Like, it's okay. It's okay. Just separate. And I think my last one, yes. And the last habit I have that changed my life is establishing my non-negotiables when I'm in my 20s. So currently I am 29 years old. I've always been the type of person that know exactly what I want, but throughout my years, it just definitely sharpened or I've definitely cut off a lot of fat to really, really hone into how I want my life to be. I've definitely customized my life throughout my 20s and I feel like that's what your 20s is supposed to be. I feel like your 20s is the time you're having fun, doing what you want to do, but also figuring out who you are throughout the entire phase. So you got to list out your non-negotiables. So for example, one of my non-negotiables is my spiritual wellness. Like I will have a problem if somebody comes into my life and tries to disturb my spiritual wellness. That's no, that's a no-no for me. So if I feel as though 
you are here to kill, steal, and destroy me spiritually, you got to go. It's not going to happen. Like, I was sent it, and I'm going to be like, yeah, this ain't going to work out. You feel me? It doesn't matter what type of friendship, relationship. It doesn't matter how much money comes in. If I feel like my spirit is going to be disturbed, my relationship with God is going to be disturbed, dealing with a person, a group of people, then I will have to um, remove myself from the situation. So your non-negotiables could be anything. Write them all down so you can see them, so you can know them, and you will be able to implement them in your life throughout your lifetime. All right, guys, so those are the habits that changed my life or I've implemented over the years in order for me to have the lifestyle that I have right now that I'm grateful for. So if this video was helpful, let me know down below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. Follow me on Instagram at imported underscore chocolate everywhere else at Wolanda. I'll see you in the next video.